Good evening, folks. After the entire NASA climate team took a shellacking the last time we went head to head, you'd think these guys would avoid me like the plague, but no. I didn't even know Climate Feedback had posted this article about me this past summer because it's a website I don't check. It's a propaganda garbage can. But someone sent it to me recently, so I figured, sure, I'll respond. The article was written by Katie Valentine and sourced by two so-called experts, George and Ian. It is my pleasure to intellectually obliterate their narrative here for you today. Their article stems from my challenge to find a climate paper that blames humans for global warming while also accounting for solar particle forcing, cosmic rays, the global electric circuit, and Earth's weakening magnetic field, because I know for a fact there isn't one. Now let's dive into their attempt to combat my challenge. They begin by addressing one point I made about coronal mass ejections, ignoring the body of solar climate forcing studies we've shown, and actually contacted the author and managed to get him to walk back his conclusions a bit. None of it addresses the real correlations discovered or changes the notion that recent solar cycles were more active, which they go on to admit later in the article. They literally picked one of the more minor things we say in the entire video. They go on to say our planetary magnetic field shields Earth from these solar effects, which they don't seem to realize implies that its current weakening means less shielding from that energy. But they also ignore that there is a powerful coupling aspect, which they also walk back towards the end of the article. A good start for a propagandist wanting to appear to have the upper hand unless you understand the subject matter of the discussion, especially in their claims that solar flares and CMEs can't affect Earth's temperature. I do suggest they read this paper from two Harvard scientists on exactly how much it can impact Earth's temperature, including multiple degree spikes from single events. Then they show their real ignorance. After having just mentioned that Earth's magnetic field protects us, they say, okay, well, Earth's magnetic field, it's only dropped 9%, which by the way, is not a small thing, but that there is no evidence it will continue or have a flip reversal because those events take hundreds of thousands of years. Let's address those points. First, their link is to an article from NASA a couple years ago and yes, that is the one that started the previous altercation, which wound up with the entire NASA climate team being shown to be shockingly ignorant of the facts and the peer-reviewed studies. Specifically, their 9% number is dated. NASA themselves said 10% in the year 2000, and that number got updated to 15% in 2010, along with a confirmation that Earth's magnetic field was weakening faster and faster, going from 5% lost per century to 5% lost per decade. And as if that math shouldn't make it obvious it can't take hundreds of thousands of years. These are the rapid flips, the magnetic excursions from just the last 60,000 years. They can happen quickly. Apparently their ignorance has no antidote of late. These are also major contributors to species extinction, by the way, and that's largely because of UV, and the climate change they cause. Then, they try to go on to say that irradiance is the key thing to look for at solar forcing of the climate. Well, let's go ahead and for a moment just ignore the hundreds of papers saying that solar particle forcing is massively important. They admit irradiance changes can account for 10% of global warming, which again, I would say is not a small number. But irradiance itself is a bit of a joke when it comes to solar forcing of the climate. They claim that it is accounted for in climate models, but as we've shown several times, no, it is not, and we're happy to show again. Because major solar outbursts show up as negative forcing, as was the case in 2017, when the sun jumped up in energetic delivery by orders of magnitude, and the irradiance they used for climate forcing showed a drop. This is due to a change in the wavelength of the irradiance output, and a shift to particle bombardment. So that's right. They show major solar outbursts as a drop in solar forcing. So no, it is not accounted for in climate models. It's way more than 10%. And that's still with them ignoring particle forcing and Earth's weakening magnetic field, just the irradiance. Now their ignorance knows no bounds as they next claim the sun emits galactic cosmic rays. Really? Well, that's not true. It emits cosmic ray protons and electrons, but galactic cosmic rays 
come from, shockingly, the galaxy outside the solar system. And there are three papers attempting to debunk their effects on clouds are dwarfed by even just the list from our 2020 textbook, which doesn't include the 15 or so papers confirming cosmic ray effects since that book was published. Their cherry picking continues. They claim climate science doesn't include solar particle forcing because scientists can't find any link between them and Earth's climate. Well, the 500 citations in our 300 page textbook suggest otherwise. There are more proofs in that area than I could ever put in one YouTube video, and there have been many more since its publication. Then, they come back to sunspots, and while they admit we are at higher levels here in the 20th century and as we moved into the 21st, they try to say that adjustments have narrowed that gap and that climate deniers like me ignore uncertainty measures in science. What, like they ignore the uncertainty in global warming? As Dr. Roy Spencer from NASA has shown, along with dozens of other papers, global warming is about a one watt per square meter imbalance with a five to 10 watt uncertainty. That is an atrocious and egregious thing left out of media coverage. And what it means is that modern warming could be entirely natural or might not exist at all, and they would never know it by their own uncertainty admissions. Now at the end, they effectively admit their issues, saying that things that I'm claiming are actually being studied, but until there is a good enough consensus on how they affect the planet down to the tiny mechanisms, they won't be included in climate models. Well, let me tell you, with all the funding going towards one side of the story, that's not likely to happen anytime soon. And yes, I am well aware that they aren't in climate models, as was my original charge to begin with. Furthermore, it is but an excuse to dodge my challenge, which was to find such a paper that blamed us and yet accounted for the solar particles weakening magnetic field and more. They didn't even try, and it's because they probably know that no such paper exists. They even tried to explain why they couldn't meet the challenge, and their conclusions about the lack of forcing are not only contradicted implicitly by their excuse for why climate models can't yet account for these connections, but they predate every significant study on the global electric circuit and how it influences the lower atmosphere. The ionosphere coupling with the lower layers is not so infant, by the way, that it can't be acknowledged. It's just not convenient for them to do so. I'll give you this, guys. This wasn't quite the whooping I gave to the NASA climate team last time. You did do a better job than they did, but it was still like mice trying to take on a tiger. You demonstrated your lack of knowledge of the peer-reviewed literature, your ignorance of the magnetic field, cosmic rays, and more, and then you cherry-picked non-inclusive studies, dated ones, that helped further your narrative. Dishonest academic fraud is what you did. Good day. Observers, I'll see you in the morning for the daily report. Be safe, everyone.